Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. So today's video, we're actually going to draw out uh, the neck muscles and talk a little bit about that and a little bit into the back with the trapezius muscles. Uh, I think it's kind of hard to explain the neck uh, without including the back a little bit because obviously the trapezius go up the back of the neck. So, uh, so we'll kind of approach those areas. This was based on a uh, request. So I just want to show you guys and gals that I'm listening and trying to answer requests when I can. Uh, so at any rate, I'm going to start by just drawing a basic shape for the jaw. I'll start very blocky and angular just to get the uh, large passes in place, large forms. And let's go ahead and bring the neck, uh, let's say back here. That's going to vary obviously a lot per uh, different types of individuals that you might be drawing. And let me also say that I'm going to stylize mine. So this isn't going to be as realistic as someone could possibly point out or something like that. Um, but the main thing here, some a few things I think, is that you want to get a bit of a point. I'm, I'm kind of picturing a male neck, by the way. Uh, but you want to get a curve here, so a sloping curve. Actually, I'm going to illustrate the notes with red. I'll try that. And more of a point and an angular for the, the front of the throat there. So Adam Zappel or whatever. And forgive me because my terminology is horrible at this point, but I'm trying to learn as I go. Uh, the sternocleidomastoid, so there's me trying to flex some of my uh, knowledge, not that I have a whole lot as it pertains to the uh, terminology, but I do know this one. And it kind of bulges out. So what I tend to notice is, you know, it's very thin as it meets down to the clavicle. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, it splits right here and connects to the clavicle. Uh, but I'm not going to try to draw this fully uh, in an anatomically correct way as much as try to explain the broad strokes. So it comes down, it meets to the clavicle uh, or collarbone. That kind of shoots out this way. You know, if I'm trying to make it look more dimensional, I'll widen it out. And I'll think about the way that it kind of connects around to the shoulder uh, or floats to the shoulder. I don't know how this one actually works in that regard. But the trapezius comes down, it widens, and it tapers out. It goes something like this. And it goes a little something like this. Hit it. All right. Showing my age there. All right. So it comes out like this. And the shoulder kind of dips around and I think it connects like this. I know it connects to the side of the chest. So we'll just say something like this. This isn't going to be about the shoulder of the chest as much, but I want to lead up to it just a little bit, you know, because it all connects, right? So, but the main thing is that the trapezius comes all the way up the back of the neck like this. The sternocleidomastoid goes behind the jaw. So I've got the jawline too far forward right here. So let me edit that a bit. There's usually a little space there, but don't uh, hold me too accountable for the exact starting at any points. So the main thing to note is that it starts here, well, we're talking about the sternocleidomastoid, and it ends back here. So one of the things that happens when you start to pay attention to where things start and where they end is it becomes easier to draw uh, the rest of it. It's kind of connect the dots or, you know... Just, you know, realizing the start and end of each muscle will really make things easier to commit to memory. Now, there's also a bunch that kind of come like this. And forgive me, I don't know the names of these. And I generally will draw them pretty much like I just did right there. Where I just make some thicker, some thinner. I, I never draw these in full detail. That's why I don't know them as well. So what happens to me and the way that I illustrate is the ones that are most prominent become areas that I memorize uh, sooner. And then, you know, as I learn more and more about anatomy, I'll obviously start to learn more of the details. But for the most part, I draw things like the, you know, the neck muscle here and the trapezius here in more detail. So it's easier to commit those to memory. Now, the other thing to think about when drawing this part of the neck is that there's a plane change right here. And I'm not gonna get into this a whole lot, but I think it's important to note because if you just get in the habit of drawing a chin, comes back, here's a neck, and the line comes back to the jaw, it, it just doesn't look as accurate or as impressive. If you get that little bit of a plane change right here, I think that it looks a lot more impressive and like you know what you're doing. So just that's just my particular take on it. 
Now, if we were to get real critical, you know, this is probably sticking out too far. There's probably too much mass there. Whatever, you can, you know, get as critical and as uh, detailed as you want. But just keep in mind that it's not completely straight. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of separation there. There's probably, uh, well, there is a bunch of muscles that go through here and under the neck. But we're not going to get into those. Again, we're going to kind of cover the broad strokes. So that'll get us started with a profile shot. And, you know, just practice this a few times so you get this, you know, these areas uh, under control. So I'm going to hit Command T. I'm going to scale this down and we'll do another one now. All right, so now for this next example, what I want to showcase is how when the neck twists that you don't really eliminate uh, one of these um, muscles, the sternocleidomastoid again. I'm going to really get sick of saying that by the end of this video. Uh, but basically, if you were to draw the skull, start with more of a, a larger form for the head. The head kind of shifted or tilted away uh, from the viewer, but the shoulders forward to the viewer. So, so say we do something like this. Always get that bend of the neck too. You want to really fight the urge. What I did there and draw it straight because you know it's never straight. In fact, hardly anything in the body is ever straight. Uh, so let's bring the neck down, and as we attach the uh, this portion of the neck muscles, I want to showcase how they meet again in the uh, center of the clavicles or collarbones, like this. The trapezius is gonna tuck down because what's happening, you have, to, you have to remember that as this twists like this, as we twist our head and the neck turns like this, it's gonna pull against the trapezius, it's gonna pull back this way. So there's kind of this, uh, I don't wanna call it yin and yang, but push and pull, and really it's all pull. Remember that your muscles only pull, they don't push. Uh, it's easy to think that they push in the way that, you know, we think about things like push-ups and the way that we push weight and things like that. But really it's all um, it's all pulling off the skeleton. Uh, so what happens is when something turns like that, it makes sense that this side is going to look different than this side. So it's real easy to make something look incorrect and do kind of this shape. Let me draw that with a red just so you can see it a bit better. It's easy to think of it like that, but if you want to get it to look a bit more realistic, it's probably going to make a bit more sense that one side's going to protrude up and one side's going to, you know, be lower from pushing and pulling. You know, probably either or, depending on where the uh, camera is. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and then with the, again, the sternocleidomastoid coming way up like this, it's going to taper and get wider. Uh, but the main thing is, is that no matter how far you could turn your head, you're going to still see this one right here come around the side let me just fill these in with thread again just trying to kind of illustrate the point so something like that so again it's real easy to kind of forget that when you start to draw these other poses again notice how I I forgot to draw the plane change there and you're almost always gonna see a little bit of the bottom of the neck and again that plane change right there So based on a style choice, you might eliminate that. That's not a big deal. There's lots of styles that don't really choose to draw this. But I think that it's important to remember that most of the time you're going to get some of this in, uh, in visibility. Unless the chin is obviously tucked down pretty far. That's going to cover it up more. But in this case, we're going to see it. So I'm going to make sure I get that in there. And I'm not going to draw a full face here. I'll just kind of get a little bit of that in there. You know, ear shape. And that would actually be a bit more forward. Remember that the ear will give you the uh, position for the brow and the bottom of the nose. So we're not going to get into dividing the face up. There's more videos on my channel for that, obviously. But the main thing is that we get some of this plane change in there, like that. And I'm going to be doing a more detailed video real soon about uh, plane changes as well. So be on the lookout for that if you're interested. Uh, so yeah, so that's our next example. And again, I really wanted to just make this point of when the head turns away from the viewer and the shoulders are parallel to the camera or viewer, that you're going to still get a little bit of this muscle. It's not just going to become a flat shape right there. Uh, or a profile of just the neck. You're going to kind of 
Just remember that these flow in and out from one another. Every part of the body works that way, uh, especially as it pertains to uh, the muscles, obviously. Uh, so with that, let's move on to our next example. All right, so now let's go ahead and draw the trapezius muscle, uh, which I often call the trapezoid muscle, uh, which I've actually seen it referred to both ways. So I don't know if I'm going nuts or I'm just uh, getting misinformed on the Internet. Imagine that. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's go ahead and start by drawing a line down the middle. So, or actually even better yet, we'll do a circle for the back of the cranium. We'll draw a little dotted line down the back of the head. It always creeps me out. Like, why is somebody picturing a dotted line down the back of somebody's head? That's creepy. All right, so let's draw a line right down the back of the neck. Kind of uh, the trapezius coming out. What I'm trying to do here is define that the back is not completely straight. That's what these center lines mean to me. And then what I'll do is just draw the neck coming down. Again, I don't want to draw it as a straight line, which I almost instinctively do, but then I correct myself with a curved line there. And I want to bring this out in basic shapes, kind of like a triangle here. Okay, so if you were to draw this triangle right here, I'm going to tr show you in a very primitive way. And then maybe a planar object or a rectangular object like this and maybe a wedge shape coming back like this. Now the reason why I'm showing it to you like this is I want you to really establish some kind of idea of perspective for each part of the body. But again, we're gonna use the center line to make sure that we don't draw it too, too straight and too flat, which is really easy to do with the back. Uh, the main thing is with the trapezius muscle is that it comes down from the neck, so it's up on the back of the neck, it comes down, connects to the shoulder, and it comes inward and it kind of V's down the center of the back like this. So we'll try to get some kind of feeling of symmetry. Even though we're doing an angled shot here, we got to compensate and do some force shortening or some force perspective from one side to the other. But it comes down to a point, something like this. And forgive me, this is probably a bit skewed, but this is just a bit of stylized representation of it. And then we could get into the shoulders. The shoulders kind of come over this way so they dip down under it and around it kind of encapsulated on the sides and then you get the uh, shoulder blades is that the technical term i don't know something like that and then you get the uh, latimus dorsi that kind of strings around i'm not going to get too far into this but it comes down like this and again it kind of i think it actually goes underneath here but i'm not sure there but let's just focus on this before I make too many mistakes trying to explain other parts of the body. So I actually need to open up my anatomy books and study a bit more before I get into too many of the other sections with you. And keep in mind to comment below and let me know what parts you want to see covered. Just like this was a video request, it always helps me to go into my future videos knowing like what you guys are really after, what you want to see next. Uh, it's all good food for thought. So make sure to comment and say, you know, I understood this part, but I didn't get this. And what should I do here? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, and you don't need to type blah, 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 just so you know. So now the main part about this, I, I try to always memorize shapes. That's why I wanted to run through the primitive shapes of the triangle, the rectangle, and the wedge. But the other thing is, is if you draw the line right down the middle like this, and you leave it like that, it's going to look pretty incorrect. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is keep in mind that there's this diamond shape probably right about here and it really does look like a diamond it's obviously a bit different as you start to draw on the muscles and you know you get this kind of definition that we see on people right about here maybe a little lower but there's like this diamond shape there to remember and what's neat about this is that it helps you to remember that these muscles pull away from the spine they don't connect and cover the spine so what you want to do is bring this shape down and you want it to separate so pull away from each other and again we got to remember that all these muscles pull away from our skeletal structure and in this case these are pulling directly off the spine so it kind of makes sense that they wouldn't cover the spine because they're uh, they, they stop you know before it or whatever and they pull against it so uh, that's when you see like you know somebody's spine kind of sticking out or whatever if they're real malnourished or maybe in great shape I don't know but you'll see some spine right there uh, but the main thing is that you get this diamond shape that's evident right about here 
And it's really helpful to remember these primitive shapes. It makes all this a lot easier to draw. Now, as you practice this over and over again, you kind of forego some of these basic primitive shapes and you just start to draw from memory. And if you're gonna draw somebody that's really ripped and really um, you know, chiseled, I guess, you're gonna get into a lot more of the little bumps. It's not gonna be these smooth lines through here. But again, I wanna draw it in a simplified way where you first understand it and then you can stylize it to your heart's content later on. But first you gotta get the basic primitive direction of all this. So let's go ahead and draw these lines right over top for the basic shapes of what you're gonna see. Like this, like this. And just remember that diamond shape and the separation from the back and that's gonna help you get those uh, in rather quickly. So now what I'm gonna do is take this video, I'm gonna clean up my pretty gnarly sketches here, but I just wanted to give you some, uh, you know, again, some basic shapes and some food for thought to get you going. But now I wanna show you how I can clean these up and make them look a little bit more impressive. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll do that part and see what you think. All right, so there you have it. Hopefully this has been beneficial for you and shown you a way that you could possibly think about drawing uh, the neck and the back muscles. Again, this is just my stylized approach, so be sure to play with different variations, proportion. Uh, this is just the way that I like to create my studies and try to feel a bit more comfortable drawing areas of the body uh, for my stylized comic art. So I'd love to know what you think in the comments section below. And by the way, I'll make sure that this art clip is available for download on my DeviantArt and there'll be a link in the description box below for that as well. As always, I appreciate your support of the channel. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and I'll talk to you soon.